Hello folks, Jonathan Milam here with, uh, I pictured one binge, but actually I've got three. This one, uh, I believe is what they would call an LA binge. The uh, serial on it is just shy of 35,000. And uh, it is the first one I've had that is the medium large plus and a fantastic horn, just really nice. See if we can get that logo shown here. But um, the only problem I may have with it is that plus may make it a little bit larger than my aged frame can handle. At any rate, I've also got a uh, three with the serial number in the high 13,000s, and I've got a 4X with the high 14,000 numbers. The 4X is one of the rarer binges. Uh, Zig's idea, a little tighter um, lead pipe. And um, anyway, just going to start playing them all. Going to be using today a Patrick CR5Z. Excellent mouthpiece. Actually, uh, Steve Patrick is known as a commercial trumpeter. Tremendous upper range. This is not a shallow mouthpiece. It's probably about as deep as a 3C. Different type cup, but uh, very nice piece. And uh, we'll see how it works again with the 3MLP bench. Okay, and uh, later on I will take a much shallower mouthpiece, the same rim, but I'll use the CR5X medium, which is quite a shallow piece and will give you an idea of the upper register. We're playing here from a, a B under the staff up to about an E natural above the staff, and uh, we'll go into a little more lead range with the other mouthpiece shortly. Okay, this is the 3, not the medium large plus, just the 3X, the 3 medium player. And here is what this logo looks like. If you can see that. For me, of course, I'm not a big wind guy, and, uh, you know, like a lot of us, I could stand to sit a little straighter and breathe a little deeper, but um, the medium player is just a little more easy for me to fill. Now, this is the 4X, and um, if you've seen my vids, you've probably seen this one mentioned before. I paid the staggering sum of $100 for it. See the patch there? And uh, when I was getting ready to pay it, the guy looked at me and he said, are you sure you want this trumpet? All the slides were froze. 
uh, dirtiest horn I think I'd ever seen. I think it had been sitting in a garage or uh, something for a long time. I came home and one of the first things I did was threw the case away. It was just deplorable. I think I soaked this for uh, about four hours before I started cleaning it. Um, fairly extensive red rot through the lead pipe. And um, uh, the third slide's a little hard to kick out. Fantastic player. <laughs> I'm afraid to have a lot done to it because any repair that you have, it's going to affect the horn somehow. Oh, it also had a sizable crease in the bell, but Charleston Music and Arts took this and uh, did a very nice job repairing that bell. Anyway, leaky valves, red rot, got a patch. Uh, the slides are not the best. I have hit more high notes with this trumpet than any other. Of course, it's Zig's 4X smaller, tighter lead pipe. It works for me. Tight lead pipe, um, smaller, uh, tight bell. Definitely not a large plus, but a medium player. And uh, I'm not sure the tone will be different, but I can do a little more with this trumpet than probably the others. <coughs> Just amazing, and I know it's um, it's different. I feel largely the same way with Strads. I've got two 190s right now, which is definitely a newer model, and they're both very near mint. And then I've got a well-beaten old 43 that I picked up for $650, and that was shipped. Um, beaten, crease in the bell, a uh, little red rot. It is such a fine player. So a horn may be um, abused a little bit. That doesn't mean it's dead. Uh, just, a, just a fine piece. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the three medium large plus, and I'm gonna use a considerably uh, shallower mouthpiece. This is Steve Patrick's CR5ZM. And uh, we'll do some glissandos just to um, see how the upper register does with these uh, same horns. Okay, the Benj 3 MLP. and we'll try just a little bit higher, that's your high C. And that E is all we're gonna get out today. Okay, we'll try the same thing with the three medium, not the plus, just the medium.
Okay, and glissandos are interesting. In uh, James Thompson's book, I believe it is, on buzzing, I think it's his book, he talks about the benefit of a glissando. And the benefit is if you're doing an octave glissando and you're trying to hit the upper range, you start off with an amateur that you can handle in, the, say, in the staff, like all of those notes were our starting point. And then when you shoot up an octave, you're not pursing your lips and tensing up like just try, trying to hit a high C or D or E flat or E, but uh, you're you're taking the more accessible note or accessible note and sliding up that octave. So it really is good practice to my way of thinking. I thought that made a lot of sense when I read it here a couple of months ago. Okay, this is the 4X, um, definitely a medium-large bell and bore, but uh, not the medium-large plus, but then with the tighter lead pipe. Right, you got an F there. Just funny how a horn can leak so much and uh, still work well. It reminds me, I was thinking one day, when uh, Olds made the uh, Mendez for the great Mendez, they took it to him. He had played a French Besson for many years and was very fond of the horn. They wanted him to endorse the ambassador, uh, but they had billed that, I think, already as a kind of a starting point. And although it was a very fine horn, you get a good ambassador. It's a great horn. I had one from L.A. about a 53 or 4 here a while back. Very fine horn. But at any rate, they uh, took Mendez, the model horn, brand new, tight valves. He played it and he said, no. And so they went back to his Besson. They checked it all out and finally realized it had really leaky valves. And so they honed the valves down a lot on the new Mendez horn, presented it to him, he played it and said, now that's the way to go. Sometimes compression uh, overly, I think it's a little more than what we're used to. If you're an extremely disciplined, efficient player, it might work well, and that might be one reason I'm not efficient or disciplined, that uh, a leaky horn works so well for me. But a very interesting thing, not sure how long I'll have all of these three together, but uh, happy to have them now, some wonderful binges. Hope you've enjoyed this. Pitch in with the comments. We really like that. Thumbs up, if you would, please. I'd love you to subscribe. I'm trying to get 5,000 followers. I think I've got about 4,300. So we're uh, on our way up. As always, have a great day. Take care of yourself in these troublesome times. If you can take care of someone near you, that's just another plus. God bless.